Right, welcome back. Uh, we're in the world of women, local content. We're talking about uh, script writing, storytelling, uh, film, radio, television, you name it. We're finishing Women's Month and uh, we're going out with a bang, as it were. But we really want to make sure that the role that women play isn't just the stereotypical ones, that above and beyond that, that they're empowered in all layers of this process of uh, filmmaking, uh, local content production, and storytelling. And uh, we've got a, a, a panel that's been helping us uh, with this conversation, but also a studio audience here, and uh, also from you at home at Morning Live SABC. We'll pick up your tweets there. But let's go to, to Nomsa. Um, if you could, it is Nomsa, right? Yes. Yeah, Nomsa okay. Your, your, your thoughts? Um, well, my question really is how, what are the plans, given the 90%, what are the plans to make sure that we get a, a, a bigger landscape of art rather than, you know, playing the usual suspects more? I mean, I noticed that after 90%, instead of hearing different kinds of artists, we heard AKA's whole album. Okay. So um, that is really my question. And the second part was, you know, as an artist myself, I'm not a popular artist. I'm a professional artist. I do create quality music that wins South African Music Awards, but there seems to be a disconnect between the two. You might be a, a good quality artist, but if you're not popular, you don't get airplay. And I think that even with the 90%, we've seen popular artists get contracts to produce shows and to produce content, but professional content producers are not getting those jobs. So I think that is an important one that we need to look at. Thank you. Okay. Hey. Um, I wish the uh, chairperson of the SABC board was here to be able to address this. But DM, perhaps this is something you can pick up because you're a policy maker and this does speak to policy specifically. Actually, Rio, there isn't your... Oh, <laughs> we miss like him too. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, Peter, the reason we support the local content, 90% local content by SABC, is simply because we want to see this diversity that we're talking about. We want South Africans to be given an opportunity to showcase what they are good in. But remember earlier on I said, we have to tell our stories. Telling our stories talks to us marketing what we are doing. Because if what you are doing is only limited to, the, of course you will have your particular audience, but then you've got to market yourself. As I said earlier, well, there's lots of funding that is needed for marketing also, but there are these obvious platforms. I'm saying this, my community radio stations is free of charge to go there and give them that content. Was it's talking to the communities that they are serving. It's helping them to be relevant to their audiences. Therefore, let's tap into these opportunities. Let us not wait for SABC to do anything. Let's bring the proposals, not just to SABC, but also to the regulator. We have a councillor Baji with us in the audience. Let's bring those things to the regulator if we know what the challenges at the regulator level. But as the policy maker, also we are here. We are available on social media. You can go to the radio if you can't walk to our offices. But we are everywhere to say we are here to listen to you. Talk to us. Because we do not understand the challenges that you go through because we are not in your space. We are at this level and therefore because we are there. Talk to us so that we see how we can improve so that this 90% can be maximized to a best that we want to achieve. That's all I will say, Peter. All right. Um, I want to go to Sister Jessica, who, uh, for those of you at home, you would have missed this amazing um, welcome that she gave us uh, in the audience she's here. Back. But she's not back. She's, she's, she's not there. She's, got she's outside. Okay. Or is there, is there someone who can speak? Because we don't. I don't see a lot of poetry on television. I don't see a lot of uh, live performance kind of things on 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 circuit and so on and so forth. Is there someone who can tell us some of the challenges of why that is? And, if you could stand up, we'll get a microphone to you. Just say your name first. My name is Cindy Sosiakwa. Um, I'm an artist, but I'm also a director at the Right Associates, a company specializing in arts, culture, and heritage with a special focus on literature. 
I would want to just talk about poetry, but literature in general. Okay. In our country, literature is not given the platform that, is, that it, is, it deserves. And not just women, but every author in this country suffers. I wish there were authors here, they would speak the same language that I'm talking about. We are running a, the, a project called the South African Literary Awards. All these years, we started the project in 2005. Every year we receive less work written in our languages. We always receive work in English. Even our black authors write in English. And again, it goes back to the issue that Uma was talking about, that we don't have people who consume these languages. So there's that problem. So poetry as well suffers the same thing, that you, most of our poets are producing their work in, uh, in English, but also they don't get platforms to be read. Instead, they get platforms like here, Jessica was narrating a poem. You know, they perform instead of being read. Books of poetry don't get bought at all. Mm. You go to bookshops, poetry books are just gathering dust mm. in, in, in bookshops. Novels, the same story. Short stories, we don't get short stories anymore. So that's a challenge that we have, and I think, um, Pens up, we'll have to do something about it, but I think we also need to get to schools so that these languages can be appreciated. Can, can I ask you this, and you know, Deputy Minister actually raised it. Is it not a question of you are applying old solutions to new problems? Because people have these things now. And isn't this where you should be publishing your poetry, publishing your content, um, because they're not going to go to the bookstores, but they will read it on their smartphones and so on and so forth. I, I want to uh, look. We, we have to admire the digital time that we are at now, mm. but we cannot do away with paper. That is just something that we shouldn't even entertain. But at the same time, not everybody gets an opportunity. Like when we talk about literature, remember we don't just talk about the, the young uh, audience. We also talk about everyone. Now there are people in the rural areas who actually don't have access to the kind of phones that could actually allow you to view the material that is there. Other people can't even afford to buy airtime. There's no way you can read that material if your phone is not loaded. Now, we should take that into account as well. Now, I think what we need is to make books more, less expensive so that people can afford to buy them. And where possible, books should be donated, not just to libraries, but to even homes. You know, uh, so I think the... The books are just important. We need them. Okay. All but right. after all, we've got eye problems. We can't be on our phones throughout. That's another <laughs> thing. So let's look at health issues as well. So we just need to be honest about it. All right. It is interesting. And I, I, I get a sense that this is um, the people who used to produce records, the kind of uh, argument they were pushing through. And they were resisting and they were resisting eventually they had to join forces. Mm. Uh, so thank you for that comment. <laughs> Let's go to Kidibody at table number three. Good morning. I, I think I just want to start by saying you've covered most of what I, I'm concerned about. Okay. I'm an author. And I just want to say to the DM, most of South African writers, including myself, have our books on electronic platforms. Amazon and any other electronic platform. What we are talking about now is to come back home and popularize our work in our countries. Mm -hmm. We launch our books overseas and in other African countries mm -hmm. much easier with the support of their public broadcasters. But coming back home, it becomes an issue. Mm -hmm. So we are not running away from technology. We are mm -hmm. there. We're just saying, let's take a multi-pronged approach mm. and make sure that we feed into the mandate that you have at National uh, Film and Arts um, Foundation. Because reality is that writing is a precursor to filmmaking, to documentary making. Mm. People have to start by writing. So for me, I just think that organizations like the SABC, and yourselves, the department, you could actually be having a strategy to look at 
popularizing writing because everything what, else What would you like us to do that. more? What would you like us to do more? Well, you know, it's been in Women's Month, I've personally participated in a whole host of community project, projects where we were teaching people and sensitizing people, young people, to writing. We get approached by young people who want to know how to write. Is there a program mm. that is out there that can be accessible to people for young people who want okay. to start writing and joining us in this, in, in, in this industry? Okay. And it's the same for all art, I suppose. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you a chance to comment on what you're hearing. Uh, let's go to Stella uh, Sabati, table number five. Body. I think mine has already been covered. It was directed to Stella. Remaking awareness to the youth who'd like to follow communication, but they haven't got the content. We need more awareness into youth in order that this should not be dropped. I thank you. Okay, so uh, some recurring themes keep coming through. One that I'm interested in, and as you comment on what you've heard, um, uh, patriarchy is something that keeps coming up in conversation more and more. And as a man, I have to say that um, culture plays a lot of a, a significant role in some of the way that we think. I wonder if it isn't time for women to tell stories that highlight some of these issues because I, I, I can honestly say that some men don't realize they're doing it. And I think perhaps the stories need to highlight these issues to show men in the mirror, listen, what you're doing is this and it's not okay. Even if your father taught you that it was fine, even if your mother taught you that it was fine, actually is not okay. Is it maybe something that we can look to women to tell those stories more, to change society and attitudes? De definitely, Peter, because earlier on I said women are teachers. If they teach us, therefore, it tells that they have a responsibility to educate even those that do not see that it is wrong, like what you spoke on. Therefore, we would encourage all women that are in the sector, whether you're a poet, whether you are a writer or whatever, let's make sure that when we give the message, it contains the three. You educate, you entertain, and you inform. It must not lose any of those three. Because if there's one that is missing, people will not get the entire message and to get them to interpret it in the way they want to interpret it. But if it's clear and it contains the three, you're bound to achieve what you want to achieve, giving out the message. And of course, like I said, it goes back to telling the story. That's what you call marketing. Telling your story is marketing. It's very important that as women, we promote each other's work. We must not compete against each other. If you know that I'm a poet, when I do, it, I do that, render that poem, make sure that you I also mention the author if I did not come up with it, if I'm just reciting it. And then if you are a professional, let's say you're writing for a magazine, mention other women that are in the space and doing lots of work. And lastly, Peter, I think 90% came at a great opportunity that all these challenges that we're talking about, they have to be addressed there. Fortunately, I said, Peter, we have the regulator here. Mm -hmm. We are here as the policymakers. SABC is here. It cannot only be SABC. As much as SABC is a public broadcaster, it has the responsibility to carry out all these things that we're talking about. We've got to also reach out to the commercial broadcasters. They've got to understand that they have a responsibility towards educating and building a social cohesion in this country. And therefore, all role players have to come together. But most importantly, there was another idea that we were venturing into, like we're going to approach our stakeholders and everybody else. The idea of a mobile cinema whereby you have all these categories of people, not just people who are film writers, but you have everybody, poets. We go through the roadshows in the schools, targeting those young children to see what here are the people that are doing work. We know if we are saying, for example, it's a, an awareness week, we target in Bumalanga, we go to Bumalanga with the different creatives in the industry. And therefore, people and, ch and children will be able to see, of course, we're doing that, of course, with your own assistance, because we cannot do it on our own as the department. Those are the initiatives mm -hmm. that you are looking at in terms of ensuring that we raise awareness amongst the young people. And of course, as I said, 90% is there to make sure that these things are realized on a bigger scale. No, I, I think, Peter, the issue of gender and socialization is, is, is huge. And as you said, not even men, people might not know what they're doing 
is wrong, including women. Where the socialized children, where the boy children say, when well, you can cook and do everything else, you can do everything. Now, even that woman, when they're going to write, they're going to write from their own space, the, the way they're socialized. So I think we need to have more discourse around issues of gender so that people should understand what we mean by gender equality and gender equity, but also how people are socialized. I, I want to agree with, with what uh, Ms. Mazwai was saying around uh, popular artists getting space and to say if you don't market your craft nobody will know about it and as NVF we have made sure that we continue going to schools now in provinces but also taking the content internationally mm -hmm. we support the filmmakers once we, if we believe in the film mm -hmm. we take it to any festival internationally because we, we feel that we've got talent and this talent must be also be consumed mm -hmm. and we see most of our films winning outside so I think it's, it's high time that even our fil uh, cinemas at home mm -hmm. and sh sh ensure that those films mm -hmm. stay for more than a week Okay. So that the, the, the filmmaker might make money out of their, their, their work. Yeah. All right. A, a question for storytellers and producers out there at the moment. Um, because you raised an interesting point, Nomsa, at the, this issue of popular versus quality. Mm. Uh, Sunday night, I am scared to read Black Twitter because of <laughs> some of the <laughs> programs that are on and what they're about and what they're saying. And I just want to get some comments from the floor about the quality of stuff that we're producing uh, and the content and what is it saying about us as storytellers and maybe our consumers, do we need to change them or do we just write, keep on writing for what they want to see? Because, I, I, you know, I actually have to switch my phone off on Sundays because I just... I can't, and that's me, but perhaps I'm an old person, I don't know. You were nodding at the front here. I'm going to get a microphone to you. Can we bring a microphone to the front here? Um, I'm, I'm going to come to you, Sister Nobs. I just want to start with this lady here. I know that uh, you weren't prepared to, but this is, if we can get, get the microphone to you. Just your thoughts. Yeah, thanks, thanks. If you could just stand up, say your name. Good um, morning, panelists and Mr. Peter. My name is Stefina. Mm. Um, I, I was prepared. I even sent a question. Ah, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just to answer your question, yeah. I'm very much like you. On mm. Sundays, I also switch off. I don't go to my phone yeah. because yeah. some of the stuff that is on our televisions on Sundays does not portray black people in a good light. Mm. And we end up being black people, making fun of other black people, which is not something that we, we should be subscribing to. We should be a people that is focused on lifting each other up. So for that, I, I, I really cannot, yeah. cannot watch yeah. uh, Sunday TV. Um, on another note, the question that I did forward to you, yeah. I'll be like, don't land there and just, you know, seize the opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm a filmmaker. Um, o, 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 o Mrs. Abrahams has been talking about the digital era. Uh, my business partner and I, uh, Salamina, we own a company called Sorel Media. And last year we launched an online TV station called Aza TV uh, with different channels there. And we want to know what kind of support can we receive from the department to make sure that we continue and we grow as a company and that the, the platform also grows. Because whatever money we may have or we did have can only take us to a certain level. Then we need uh, help from, from the powers that be. And to Mrs. Chairperson um, from the NVF, yeah who are doing great work in supporting us as filmmakers. Uh, they've recently just funded us into taking one of the films uh, that we, we shot ourselves called Love and Guaito to TIFF next week right. um, to, to market it. But my problem as a filmmaker is, and as a South African filmmaker is, when are we implementing the 90-10 policy right. in our cinemas? Because our cinemas, the distribution chain messes us okay. up as filmmakers. When is that going to change to also accommodate South African filmmakers? Okay, so 90% local content needs to go to the movie houses as well. Yes. Okay, all right, so here's what we're going to do. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, so I'm going to start with you, uh, Dr. Munareng. As you conclude, 
perhaps you can reflect on some of the questions and the issues that have been raised. Uh, so you've literally got 30 seconds each just to kind of point to it. But just after, I'm sure that uh, Deputy Minister and uh, Mayor Ramakoshi will speak to you. But 30 seconds each. Let's start with you, Dr. Munari. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I think it is, it is important that the 90% uh, 10% policy uh, should be infused with the element of language itself because it wouldn't make sense if production, the local production is not done in languages that are indigenous to South Africa. Mm -hmm. There's one script and one kind of film that is very important. Um, journalism is much about telling story. The biggest story that South Africa has been given is when the sister from the super province, Casta Semenya, won the award. She redefined the world. Mm -hmm. She redefined gender. She cut across that, mm -hmm. and she indicated to us that women can particularly rewrite the story. When she was faced with all kind of halabaloo throughout the world, she never fought recklessly. Okay. You've had your 30 seconds, but I Thank think you. we get a sense of what you're saying. Thank you. Uh, Madam Fush. Uh, I, I think for, for, for us as NAVF, including the Department of Arts and Culture, we are not talking about having cinemas in townships and to ensure that we promote the films where people are so that they don't use money and go to town and again pay for, for, for to go to the movies. We, we will look at the issue of 90%, but that is business. That, that is, I mean, you, you can't go to somebody's business and, and want to dictate. So I think the issue of the bicycles all over the country will make them to now want to play because when there is no audience to consume that, they'll then have to, 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 to come down and, and listen. But we, as an NVF, will continue supporting local uh, uh, film, especially women and youth, because okay. that is our future. Fantastic. Thank you, Thank you Peter. Uh, Minister. Let me also add to what she has just spoken to, that the creative industry must know that is the Department of Communications. We are in full support of your efforts, and we appreciate the role that you're making in ensuring that we build social cohesion in our country. I uh, would like to say we must commit here, Peter, that it cannot be a once-off that we have these engagements. We need to have a session, a proper one, whereby we sit, we invite all these de affected stakeholders that can unblock or unlock all these challenges that we are facing. Then we are committing as the department to say we'll make a follow-up and invite these creatives to such a platform. All right, okay. It, certainly this is a conversation that needs to happen more often, more regularly, and perhaps for even longer. But unfortunately today we've run out of time, and that's where we're going to have to leave it. Happy Women's Month to all our beautiful and amazing women that have contributed in so many ways and so many spheres uh, across the continent and across the country. Thank you so much indeed for your continued uh, contribution to uh, what makes life life. And uh, to all of you at home, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And uh, support as much local content mm -hmm. as you can. Mm -hmm. uh, at the movies and TV everywhere. Just make local lekkerme. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Have a great day, everybody, <laughs> from all of us here. Take care. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah. All right. Stay seated, everybody.